I hope the audio and everything is okay. Uh, sorry, just just mm. to make sure. Yeah. There's two screens. Two screens. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Yeah, there's audio. There's audio. Yeah. Ah, perfect. But uh, it's a bit smaller. Yeah, I was trying to predict the other one, but it seems it's not uh, it's not detecting the second screen. Yeah. Which is like connected. Screen, yeah, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the other option is if I close this, uh, but this one will not be like that, so yeah. So I think I'll just stick to like this, so yeah, everything just became black, you okay, yeah. Okay, we will start. Yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, maybe how many of you know about computer vision? Okay, that then the, this is the reason that this class is organized. So. Uh, to introduce you guys to computer vision uh, and especially because you guys are taking computer graphics and how it is related to computer graphics is basically the idea. So uh, I, I was the research assistant for this course last semester. I used to run uh, the lab sessions and uh, most of the code you are doing in the lab is basically what uh, I developed last time. So. If it is a mess, I'm really sorry. I just want to apologize first. I know you guys are complaining, like, what is this mess? And like, I know it's, uh, it's not the best shape, but uh, I'm really sorry for that. I just want to start with that one. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> this course, uh, I'm sitting in 8252, in case you guys are wondering where I'm sitting. And I'm a PhD student working on computer vision. So my work is on medical images, but I mostly work on computer vision aspect, irrespective of what source of the data is. So I adopted this slide from multiple slides, uh, resources. So it's going to be like an uh, introduction to a very wide perspectives, how computer graphics and computer vision is related. So what is an image? I'll start with that one. So when you take, a, when you take uh, a picture, basically you are converting a 3D world into the two-dimensional surface. So what, what you are doing is, for example, if you can say it is a two variable. So if someone writes, for example, a mathematical equation, R to two R, what does it mean? So this is the first domain. The domain is two dimension. The each image have x, y coordinates. And R is the value. So that is the range. So for each point, x, y, you have a single value. So you can represent an image in this combination. So R2 to R. That means x, y coordinate one value. So basically, you have a Homer here. You take a picture of him. You have a light source striking Homer. Then you take that reflection and uh, put it as a 2D. So basically what you are doing is a transformation. When you transform a 3D information into two, uh, 2D, basically you are losing information, yeah? So for example, when, when you see a shadow of a person and trying to understand the person from his shadow is like uh, a bit com a difficult problem. So that's basically what you are doing when you take a picture. Of course there are like, for example, Kinect camera, which also takes the depth information uh, trying to understand the whole uh, 3D scene, but it is not that much uh, accurate and more robust as taking picture. Yeah. So, basically, image is just a function. So, for example, if you look at this, 
Aaron Schwarzenegger picture. So basically, you have this image. So for each uh, for each point, if you plot it as height, so this is the value as height. You have this surface function. It's just a two D surface complicated surface function. For a computer, image is nothing but just a two D function. Okay. So you have x y coordinate for each. Uh, you start. This is the origin normally. So you take the origin at this point normally. That is a uh, general agreement. So then you have the value for each one. If you plot it as an altitude, you have this surface. So that is basically an image. Image is nothing but just a mapping from 3D to 2D and uh, taking the picture. Uh, so that's what you do. So when you <coughs> acquire an image, what happens? I know most of you have smartphones. So what happens when you take a picture? What happens? Yes? Yes, so the memory is the storage, the storage, but when you, first when you go to the acquisition part, the acquisition, the storage, yes, of course, you have to store it somewhere once you take it with the acquisition part. Yeah. I'm a bit unsure, but isn't there this sensor? Yes. That pops up in different memories? Yeah, yeah. So what you have is, I will show you this imaging system later in the next slides. So what you have is a scene, which is the illuminant. You need some light source that strikes the surface of the object. So once you have this scene, then the imaging system will uh, project the scene into its own internal image plane. So once, that, once you have this plane, because you can't store continuous variables, so you just take the discrete, you discretize it, because for each pixel value, you only have one value. So you don't have, for example, for discrete, it's not continuous function, it's a discrete function. So you have then a discrete representation, which is the digital image. So any kind of digital image is discrete. So that is a picture plane, so where the picture is created. So basically, as you, you guys said already, so you have this wallet. Normally, this is pinhole camera or something like that. So then once you have it, then maybe you guys did some old experiment, maybe high school or elementary school, how camera works. Did you guys do? It's like you take a box and you, you, yeah. Uh, I, my guess is that this is because I had some of those guys in mobile last week. We talked about the pinhole camera principle, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Camera obscura, right? Yeah, yeah, camera obscura, yeah. And most of them said they haven't, but this oh, okay. is different. That's an, a subset of the people that showed up in mobile. So they may actually have, it, have had it in this week. Yeah. No, did you? Have you guys did this experiment? I've never done the experiments, but I've heard about yes, the concept. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. The concept is very simple, how uh, image is formed. So just create, like, you have a box, and create, uh, make a hole from one side, and also just, like, uh, a viewer. Then from the other side, you create another hole, just make it dark. Then when you look at from one side, the image will be created, inverted, but uh, in, in projection plane. So what you need is how to store that projection. So you just need uh, light sensitive papers or maybe in, uh, in all time, length, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, tapes. So that's how you record it. So, but in digital camera, you just have this CMOS sensor. Mm -hmm. That one will take the whole picture. Then you, uh, then you have digitalizer. Basically, this is what it's, uh, what it's doing is you sample a lot of signals, then you represent it in, in the form of uh, digital <coughs> value. It's not continuous anymore. What's the difference between continuous function and a discrete function? You guys take discrete mathematics already, yeah? So what is the difference between calculus one and math three you have taken? I don't think we've taken math three. I 
Okay, the digital uh, or discrete mathematics one. The, the main thing is the discrete one is more close to computers because it, is, it deals with discrete values. So a discrete signal is a signal which is defined at a given point. It's not continuously defined everywhere. A continuous function is the one that is defined everywhere. You can find the function at t plus delta t, delta t being arbitrary. So, but in this case signal, it's not defined for all uh, values. So, this one is the one that does this one. So, this digitalizer, it will take the samples for each value. So, uh, in image, you have three types of images. No, not, not necessarily three, but the most common ones. So you have binary image where the values could be zero or one. So it's binary. So if you have binary image, either you have black or white. So sample image will be like this one, like here, zero or one. Then you have grayscale image. Typically the values of for each pixel, for each pixel, so a pixel is a one point in an image, okay? For each pixel, that could, uh, like for example, if you have uh, one megapixel image, so one megapixel means 1,000 uh, pixel in a row, or 1,000 pixel in height, then if you multiply it 1,000 by 1,000, you have one mega, then if each pixel is represented by eight bits, which is like, then if you multiply it, you have that value. So, for each pixel value, you have between the value between 0 and 255. You can also normalize it if you want. For example, you can have it between 0 or 1. So, normalization is also possible. Like any kind of data, uh, data structure you use, for example, you can use float, double. In this case, it is called unsigned int because the integers are never negative. So it's al al also known as unsigned int, u int. So in color image, you have three channels. So you have RGB channel. So in hyperspectral image, for example, there are some cameras that take images of 16 channel or uh, weird channels. In that case, you have a lot of channels of this. So an image, normally the one you have in, in your phone, normally is three channel. But another uh, imaging device can take 10 channels or 16 channels. So it's su su super normal. So what computers see and what humans see? What we see is this accident. What the computer sees is these numbers. So, for example, if you just take this part of this image, <coughs> the computer sees this number, what we see is these fruits. So basically in computer vision, you try to understand patterns of these numbers, or try to extract information from uh, these numbers so that we can map to what we see. So for example, when we say this is like, a kiwi or some fruit, you already have some information about it and you already extracted it very easily. But for computers, it's very difficult because what you see is just, what the computer sees is just the numbers. So if you, for example, if you, uh, if you split an image, RGB channel, so the, if you decompose it, you have always three channels. So this the R, uh, green, blue channel. So I think you already, you guys did already texture loading and stuff, yeah? Yeah, we kind of through the course up to shadows, I believe, right? Okay. So yeah, kind of the main... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for example, uh, in your case, when you do texture mapping or something like that, so you can process the image because this is the first channel, because when you uh, load, for example, uh, you are using soil. So when you load, when you load a so with the soil library, it will give you three channel images. So you can process each one independently if you want. And you can have different effects. The one 
uh, more than the one that is described. And for example, in soil, also you you need to specify at least in texture uh, when you load texture, you have to specify the interpolation type. What kind of interpolation you want to do? Because when you when you project this image into a different surface, there may be values that are not assigned. So how to estimate these values? You can also play and have very fancy effect with image processing. Okay? The good thing about this RGB is they are additive. So if you add, that means you have RGB. When you add the values of the uh, each channel, you have different value. When you subtract the same value, you get you go back to the old one. So they are additive. So the, this is very important uh, if you want to come up with different uh, ways of uh, processing. Yeah. So just to give you some idea about some notations. So image intensity is uh, light energy emitted from unit area. So this is device dependent. So for example, if I take a picture with my camera and if that's a different model and if I take the same scene, the amount of light that comes to my camera from the same scene will be different based on the camera you are using. So that is the image intensity. Image brightness is subjective. So when you see an image, you say this is bright or not. This is very subjective uh, term. So these are the things that people normally talk in uh, image processing. So they talk about image intensity, brightness, and the other is image gray level. So this is the relative intensity. So for example, the difference between the neighboring pixels, how, uh, based on the average, how far from each other. That one is device independent because the difference is always the same, irrespective of the sensor. It should take uniformly uh, from scene to scene. Yeah? So uh, if you guys don't understand this point, I will give you this image. So do you think which one is, which one is brighter, this one or this one? Same. <laughs> 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 I'm just by eyes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we went through this in, in the shadows, of course. Okay. And there were some uh, uh, visual illusions. So you are just like being suspicious and like, yeah. <laughs> 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 so just suspicion will save you always. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> So, if you look at it, they are actually the same intensity. The intensity is the same, but the brightness is different. Because the brightness is relative contrast. You consider the relative things. So, that, that is very important. So, the intensity is the same. In, in the computer, when you represent as an image, that value is exactly the same when you compare them. But when human eyes see it, it sees the whole context from the background and the relative thing. And it gives you different reading. By, by the human mind gives you different reading. So that is brightness, which is, that's why I uh, hear, that's why here image brightness is subjective. It's not uh, an absolute measurement. But image intensity and image gray level, they are almost uh, device independent. Got it? So uh, l let me give you some things that you can do on your texture, for example. So you, you have this kind of texture that you want to map on your uh, device, on your texture, uh, uh, some texture mapping you want to do on your model or something, some part of your model you want to put this image. So if you want to enhance it, for example, you can uh, normalize your image between 0 and 1. Normalize are when you read it, it's between 0 and 255. 
but you can normalize it between zero and one. So if you have such kind of image with such kind of variation, for a human, as I described earlier, the relative is very important. The relative value is very important. So you can modify the relative values from the original signal into uh, elongating the variation. So that's called contrast stretching. You can, you can uh, increase the distance between the, uh, this point and this point by keeping the average. You keep the, the difference the same. You, you maximize the difference, but you don't change the values. You just uh, maximize the difference. So that's called contrast stretching. So the simplest one you can do is, for example, so the, for example, uh, you can just do, uh, compute the average of luminescence for all samples. Then, once you have, you, you can scale deviation from L for each pixel. You can scale it based on that one. Then you have more saturation. So what you have is, for example, if this is the original signal, if this is the original signal, then you stretch it up and a bit down, so you stretch the difference. Then you have more saturation. So that is, for example, a simple thing that you can do in OpenGL as well with the C++, uh, because they, they, they can already access each channel. Of course, you guys also can do like sampling. So this is rescaling, you have original image. So this is one fourth of uh, the original image. So how are you going to sample it? It's also uh, one thing you need to be careful because you don't want to have this uh, non smooth transitions. Or you can increase four times of the original. So when you go up sampling, uh, what you need to be careful is like how to interpolate the middle frames that you don't have value for. So that is very important. So the easiest one is you can repeat the neighbor, but repeating the neighbor, for example, if I don't have the value between uh, one and three, if I repeat just one as the value of two, then that's basically repeating the neighbor, but that doesn't work very well usually. You'll have uh, artifacts. But the easiest one is like, for example, bilinear interpolation. Uh, you can try to fit some, some sort of polynomial between the two pointers, and then you say, okay, the middle value is the value of this point. So you, you, there are a lot of techniques without uh, upsampl upsampling your image without any kind of artifacts. So that is uh, uh, important when you do upsampling. Of course, the, the, you can do a lot of manipulation with the image. So this is the image part of the computer vision. Pro so in computer vision, you have two main problem, uh, two main types. One is the uh, image side, acquisition, image processing, uh, enhancement, uh, and multiple uh, similar tasks. Then, what is computer vision then? If you guys have an idea, just throw. What is computer vision then?
Nossa. So, if you guys need a break, I can give you a break. Yeah. Then we start from here later on. Most of the, this is not the, um, the